Hey everybody, how's it going? In this video, we'll be learning the basics of SQL queries from the ground up. Now, SQL is a great language for programmers to learn uh, because it's hard to find a software system these days that doesn't talk to some type of database on the back end. And uh, not only is it a great thing to know, but it's also a good starting point for certain people who are interested in getting started in computer science uh, because in my opinion, it's not nearly as difficult as learning the ins and outs of a programming language like Python or JavaScript or Java. Um, I mean, there are just a limited number of commands and for most jobs, uh, you're going to be using the basics of SQL, uh, such as grabbing values from a database that meet a certain criteria or something like that. Um, now, there are times when more advanced queries are going to be needed, uh, but if you learn the basics, then it's going to put you in a position where you can do the majority of the, of the queries and then you can learn uh, the more advanced stuff whenever you're ready. Um, so with that said, let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my environment so that I can run SQL queries. And also we're going to uh, create our first database and connect to that database. Now for these tutorials, I'm going to be using a Postgres database. Um, now I'm, I'm on a Mac, so I'll show you the process that I went through to set this up on my machine. So first, we're going to need to install Postgres. And on the Mac, the easiest way to do this is with the Postgres.app. Now, if you search in Google here for Postgres Mac, uh, the first result is the official website. And if we open up that website, you can see that they have a downloader here, but then they also recommend the Postgres app here as a simple native Mac app that runs in the menu bar without the need of an installer. And uh, that's what I think is the easiest. So I already have that pulled up here, but uh, if you run the search, it's the second result here, this postgres.app. So now that we're in this website, we can just download like this like any other application. So let's go ahead and run that download. So now once that download is finished, let's go ahead and unzip this. And now let's go ahead and move uh, this application over to our applications folder. So I've already got that pulled up here. I'm gonna drag that on over, okay. Now with that Postgres app installed, uh, that's going to give us a Postgres server that we can talk to using the command line. Now the command line isn't the best way to visualize what's going on, uh, so we're also going to want a graphical interface program uh, to inspect our databases. Now on the Postgres app website that I had pulled up earlier, they list a few of their favorite GUI tools here. So I'm going to click on this link and these are some of the GUI tools that uh, they recommend. Now the tool that I'm going to be using for these tutorials is this one down here near the bottom called PSQL. Now if you prefer another option then go ahead and use what you like. Um, but the reason that I chose this program uh, is because it's very clean, it has a simple layout, and it also has the ability to enlarge fonts, which a few of the other ones surprisingly didn't have. Um, now these features are important to me because uh, recording these videos, I don't want a lot of windows and stuff getting in the way, and also I wanna make the font large enough for you guys to be able to see what I'm typing. Um, so let's go ahead and download this program, just like we did the other one. And then we're also going to move that to our applications folder. So let's go ahead and unzip this and I will open up my applications folder again and just drag this over here. Okay. Now with both of these programs installed, let's first start our SQL server by running, by running this Postgres app. Um, so now we can see that our server is running because if we look up here in the top menu, uh, we can see that this little elephant icon here and it says running on port 5432. Now it's also going to pop up this window here with this option to open PSQL and what that's going to do is it's going to open up the command line uh, for us to start typing in commands. Now I know that the command line can be intimidating to some people but we're not going to be in here for long. Uh, all we're going to do is create a database that we can work with. So to create this database, it's just as simple as running the command create database, and we're going to call this sample underscore db, and we need to end this with a semicolon. So let's go ahead and hit enter there, and you can see that it says create database. 
Now there's a psql command here, uh, backslash l. If we run that, then we can uh, view the databases that we have here. And you can see that it created a few for us whenever we first installed the program. But we can see here that we do have this sample underscore db. Uh, now to quit out of this command line, we can do this backslash q, and it takes us back to our normal terminal. So now I quit out of the command line there. Um, uh, because we're not going to need to use it anymore because the command line, it's not the prettiest way to see what's going on in our database. Uh, so let's connect to the sample database that we just created using the psql application that we downloaded earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. Now if you get this little error here, cannot be opened uh, because developer cannot be confirmed, that's because I double clicked it. It's a weird thing with the Mac. If you actually right click it and click open, uh, then it'll give you the option to override that and just open that up anyway. Uh, you'll see that with certain applications. So now that we have this application opened up, we're going to connect to our database and we're going to accept most of the defaults here. You can see the port is 5432, the same one that's listed whenever we right click on our server. It says it's running on port 5432. Uh, the one thing that we are going to want to change here is that we're going to want to type in the database that we created. So we called that sample underscore db. And now we can go ahead and uh, connect to that database and we've successfully connected to the database. Now there's nothing here right now. Um, that's because we don't have any tables or any information uh, within our database yet. But we are in a position now to where we can begin writing a SQL command. So uh, for example, if I wanted to create a table here, I could create a table, um, we'll just call this test underscore table. Now I'm not gonna go too far into the details here because I'm going to go, uh, uh, go into this further in another tutorial. Um, but if I just create a very basic table here with one column, I can run that query. And if I refresh our tables over here, then we have a test table with one column uh, called A. So in this tutorial, we uh, installed a Postgres server we created the database, and then we also installed a visual application to where we can uh, visually inspect this database. And we've also set it up to where we can now run SQL queries against this database. So in the next tutorial, we'll start adding tables to our database, and we'll go over exactly how to do that. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you guys. Um, if you have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. Uh, be sure to watch the other videos to uh, get more in depth in the SQL commands. And thank you all for watching.